Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. We have some big primaries in the state of Massachusetts. So the one and only Ryan Grimm will be here to break it all down. Some big ones that are uh, going to be on the ballot tonight. We've also got Sarah Nelson on. She is, of course, the president of the Flight Attendants Union. Um, some big things happening with the airlines. You remember, they got that package deal that was supposed to prevent job loss. Now it looks like there's going to be massive job loss after all. So we're going to talk to Sarah about what is going on there. But we wanted to start with the presidential race and the unrest in cities across the country and how Biden and Trump are both handling that. Yeah, very important because obviously the polls are in flux. There have been a lot of takes, including mine. I mean, that chaos could be generally helpful to Trump as long as he doesn't step on it, which it seems that he kind of did. Which he immediately um, pushed. As long yeah. as Biden, you know, <laughs> as like if Biden could give like a forceful denunciation and assure Americans that he's not generally tied to some of the street violence, something that I thought he did pretty well. So let's Let's start off yesterday, I thought probably the most effective moment where he was countering the core of the Trump campaign messaging, yeah. which is that radical socialist tied to the rioters. Let's take a listen to what he said. You know me. You know my heart. You know my story, my family story. Ask yourself, do I look like a radical socialist with a soft spot for rioters? Really? Yeah. Not bad. Well, I mean, and this is why, I mean, this yeah. is why from the beginning, this critique of Biden was always going to be tough to land mm -hmm. because this is a guy whose entire career has been like a sister soldier moment, right? Sure. Like he is the crime bill guy. He has gone out of his way to be the opposite of the socialist Marxist left. And so all he has to do is be like, come on, really? I've tried me? to explain this to people on the right because they really don't understand it. And I actually am thinking that it's too much of a bubble problem, which mm. is that they're like, but Kamala, you know, Kamala said this about the Minneapolis bail fund and Kamala's really woke and Kamala. And I'm like, yeah, but you haven't said one word yet about Joe Biden. Right. And here's That's the thing. Interesting. All of the people who work for Biden. Yeah. I have no doubt that there are these identitarian monsters, but like it does not matter. Right. Like it, they are not the people who are on the top of the ticket. Running a process campaign is a very D.C. critique. Right. It's very much like, oh, but, you know, if you vote for him, then his deputy attorney general might use the office of the civil rights. People are like, what? What are you talking about? They're like, that's Joe. I've known the guy for 40 years yeah. on the stage. It's an unbelievable political advantage to him. And so their problem with the Trump campaign is that they're basically arguing almost the inverse of what the Democrats have argued against Trump, which is that the Dems have always been like, yeah, but Trump is really this, you know, monster, you know, this puppet for Putin and or he's really controlled by these four. No, that's not what's going on there. Right. And so in both cases, they're asking voters to take a leap of you have to understand how government works and yeah. look for better or worse. People don't. They try, They vote top of the ticket and trust Absolutely. about how they feel about that person. People do not feel Joe Biden is a radical socialist. You know, there was actually Terry McCall, if you guys yeah. would be shocked to hear me praise him. But he had a good quote to The New York Times in their big piece about all of this today. He said, look, Trump wants to play on this field of the protests and the unrest in the streets. Let us play on that field. I think it's a great field for us to play on. Everyone knows we need healing, and that's a strong suit for Biden. And he's right. He is like, if you're going to talk, it's not policy, right? Nine percent of people say they're voting for Joe Biden based on policy. The reason he was so successful in Democratic primaries, twofold. One, the loyalty to Barack Obama and the, you know, associated electability that people made the argument for. But to the extent that there were genuine warm feelings towards Joe Biden, it is on the sense of his grief and the way he talks about that and the road he has traveled throughout his life. So you just have to ask yourself, like, if you're a normal person out there, which one of these candidates do you think is going to actually calm the waters? Like, is there one person who thinks, oh, what we really need to do to turn the temperature down is to reelect Donald Trump? It's just not it's just not an argument that ultimately lands. And so what we've seen throughout his presidency is at times when there has been unrest, Charlottesville. Mm after the George Floyd protests, and now we'll see what happens here. But in each of those previous times, it's gone really poorly for him. Be why? Because he comes out and says all the wrong things and can't bring himself to say just the basic things, things that Joe Biden said in this speech. I condemn violence yes. on all sides. Not I'm not hard. sympathetic to rioters. We need to come together as a country. Like just the basic, regular, presidential type stuff. 
this president can bring himself to say. So what we saw yesterday from Trump was he got asked about, okay, well, what about your people out there who bring guns to protest or bringing paintball guns to protest? Also, do you want to tell them to, to kind of cool it? Here's what he had to say. Do you want to also take this chance to condemn what your supporters did? Well, I understand they had large numbers of people that were supporters, but that was a peaceful protest. And paint is not, and paint is a defensive mechanism. Paint is not bullets. Uh, your supporters, your supporters, and they are your supporters indeed, uh, shot a young gentleman who, uh, and killed him, not with paint, but with a bullet. And I think it's disgraceful. These people, they protested peacefully. They went in very peacefully. And I'll tell you what they're protesting. They're protesting when they turn on television or read whatever they may be reading, and they see a city like Chicago, where 78 people were shot and 13 died, or a city like New York, where the crime rate has gone through the roof, or a city like Portland, where the, the entire city is ablaze all the time, and a mayor says, we don't want any help from the federal government. When these people turn that on and they see that, they say, this is not our country. See, and that's a major missed opportunity because once again, and look, yes, I sympathize. It is frustrating to watch, you know, riots and then people in the media justify it and all that. But that doesn't mean that it's good to encourage people to go in with paintball guns. That is an escalatory thing. And you yeah. do not want that. That is, once again, that is what leads to violent confrontation in the streets. And the reason that I played that, we play that clip, is because it was a clear opportunity to be like, I'm asking my supporters don't become like the other side. They want to riot and loot and burn. Let law enforcement enforcement do its job and let's all get back to normal. Let's have some understanding in this country, a call to the better angels of your nature. And that's just something that he has not wanted to do. And again, this is not what the country wants. Right. What the country wants is what I was just saying, which is much more analogous to what Biden is saying. Yes. Now, the Trump campaign is like, well, would Joe Biden send for law enforcement? Would he give uh, uh, would he give more resources to legitimate questions. I hear you. But again, you're trying to make this policy case that Biden would not, you know, more strongly respond or Biden would not actually support law enforcement. And again, I'm totally here for that. But if your top line messaging does not immediately condemn more violence in the street, regardless of who it is doing, then people are going to see it as tribal politics. And then that is just going to encourage more left wing violence, more right wing violence and an escalatory mover maneuver to something that we do not want to see in this country. I think that's yeah. very well said, uh, particularly what you said about people are just going to see it as tribal politics, which it is, which it just inflames yeah. everything. And so, yeah. You know, it is actually absolutely correct, the analysis that people want calm, they don't want chaos, they don't want this to get out of control, right? They want order return. No doubt about that. That's like a 95, 90% issue. No doubt about it. But when you have Joe Biden sounding the right notes, as basic as they are, and I actually thought this whole speech, and we're going to play a little bit more of it in a moment, much as parts of it I don't agree with. But I thought it sounded the right notes of that, just basic, unifying, yes. presidential language, what people want to see from a leader in a time when the country feels like it's on the brink. And then you have Trump in the same day, and by the way, he's going to Kenosha today, even though the local leaders were like, please don't come, and we'll see how he does today. But you have Trump on the same day coming out, and you know, he can't, he still hasn't talked, said the, the name Jacob Blake, he's not gonna meet with the family in Kenosha. He condemns, as he should, the uh, shooting that happened in Portland that killed one of his supporters, but he goes out of his way to defend the shooter who is one of his supporters who killed two people in Kenosha. So it is so blatantly tribal that people just feel like it adds to the chaos. Yeah, and look, like I, look, the Jacob Blake situation, not clear cut, very complicated. If you go look at the foot, at the, at the facts. Same thing with Kyle Rittenhouse. Very much, I think he's very, got a very good case for self-defense. But the real thing that you want to tamp down there is be like, look, I don't know the facts in the Jacob Blake situation. I condemn violence. I condemn crime, violence all around. That it goes That's down. all you have to say. And I support law enforcement. With Kyle Rittenhouse, it looks, that's what he said. He was like, it looks like a self-defense situation, but I encourage any 17 year old supporter of mine don't bring a gun to a protest leave it alone let law enforcement do its job any Again, supporter of mine period you should, yes. you should just say that like any support if you're a real supporter of mine if you're a real trump patriot don't go out there let our boys in blue go handle it fine i mean 
It's not difficult. Uh, once again, it's aesthetics. And people crave calm in these situations. Right. They crave order. They crave, they, they crave the ability to not feel like things are going out of control. So if they feel like you're pouring gasoline on that fire, right. or in this particular, I'm not saying the whole thing was wrong, but vis -a -vis, compared to Biden, it was not in the same way. And what's interesting is that both of the campaigns now basically have the same attack line against each other. So let's throw this up there on the screen. My friend, Emily Larson, she's a great reporter. She showed that basically the two statements that they have put it out is one, Trump is too weak and too scared to repudiate Kyle Rittenhouse from the Biden campaign. From the Trump campaign, Biden is too weak to call rioters what they are, which is violent left-wing mobs. And so this is the attack that they're gonna take and I think there's merit to both of them. But the issue is that people are, are going to see aesthetically that Biden did call out violence of all kinds and didn't offer any defense whatsoever of something that appears to be associated with him. Politically, that's going to be a major advantage to him. It is. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I think I think that really says it all in terms of if you want calm in the streets and you ask yourself which of these two people is likely to turn down the temperature in terms of instead of turn it up. I think Biden yesterday clearly demonstrated that he was that candidate. And it's not just aesthetics because people really listen to President That's Trump. True. So if he That's told true. his supporters, stay home, we're yeah, going to be calm, would. we're going to be peaceful, you know, it may actually turn down the temperature. And that's part of the dynamic, too. There was one other part of the Biden speech that I wanted to play, which I thought was interesting, because our big critique of the DNC, mm -hmm. and we weren't alone here, <laughs> was that while we have this massive economic fallout, it was barely noted yeah. at the convention. It was also barely noted at the RNC, by the way, because they want to do the whole, like, the stock market's amazing, yeah. and we've recovered. Way to go, guys. Um, they seem to have picked up on the fact that this was maybe a missed opportunity. We heard it first from Kamala last uh, at the, you know, at the RNC as the pre to Trump's speech, and we heard it actually a little bit in the speech from Biden yesterday. Let's take a listen to that. Donald Trump's role as a bystander in his own presidency extends to the economic plan and pain, the plan he doesn't have and the pain being felt by millions of Americans. He said this week, and I quote, you better vote for me or you're going to have the greatest depression you've ever seen. Does he not understand and see the tens of millions of people who've had to file for unemployment this year so far? The people who won't be able to make next month's rent payment? The people who lost wages while the cost of groceries have gone up dramatically? President Obama and I stopped the Depression in 2009. We took a bad economy that was falling and turned it around. Trump took a good economy and drove it back into the ditch. Now look, of That's course... That's not true, but... Yeah. Of course, on yeah. the substance, too, yeah. like... It's a pandemic. Maybe support Medicare for all. Maybe support a UBI. Like, let's lead with some policy and some substance. But the fact that he's even giving voice yeah. to this is a step forward and, frankly, a tremendous advantage because the Trump team still wants to deny that this economic pain even exists. It's true. Yeah. I mean, look, what he said about the economy, pulling it out after 2009, not true. But it doesn't really matter, right? Because if you're the only person who's talking about it, people are going to say, well, at least Joe is talking about the economy. This is how they At least he you. sees me. At, at least, least he, he understands my pain. Yes. Yeah, I know. It drives me crazy. It's true, though. I, look, I get it. That's how politics is. And it, it's a, a generally a lesser of two evils game. That's how voters look at these situations. Um, so if the Trump campaign wanted to step up, not that hard. There's a lot of ground there. Indeed. To talk about. Indeed. All right. All right we're going to tell you what's on our radar. So that's next.